Fuck, I'm good. How are you, buddy? Man, I can't complain. Um, uh, just just chilling, man, down in Florida. Oh, you live in Florida? Well, I'm. I live in between Jackson Hole and. In Florida, I grew up in Florida, so I'm vis- I'm down here visiting my dad. But we kind of, my wife and I kind of have a place in in Wyoming, and then we kind of shift home base down to here for the winter. So Jackson Hole's nice. You ever see Nikki Six out there? Um, he's out there. No, I I've I've seen him at the store once, but no, I haven't ever like hung out with him, but. Um, I mean, our, our friends or some of our friends know him and stuff. So, yeah, you're out visiting. Yeah. Him. How's your dad doing, man? He's good, man. He's uh, he's hanging in there. You know, I mean, he's getting older, so he's he's not in you know perfect shape, but he's he's uh, his spirits are are high. You know, so. you think he'll play live again or no? Probably not. No. Yeah. yeah. What a bummer, man. That guy is uh that guy is a uh, high water mark for me, man. I've seen him many, yeah. many, many times, man. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, one of the greats, man, for sure. <laughs> oh my one god. Great. That's fucking putting it mildly. And it's funny because I uh was listening to your record, which by the way, man, fantastic record. You've got a debut solo record coming out. And uh what is it? Precious. What is it? Wild and Precious. And Wild I, and Precious Life. Yeah. Wow. yeah. It, it came out actually uh, in July, but yeah, it's out right now. I um, just heard it uh, last night, uh, yeah. sent it over to me and I was like, wow, this is a fucking great record. And talk about, uh, I, I mean, you know, I'm good friends with Jacob Dylan, and there's that thing of, you know, the, the star's child, that kind of thing, like, oh, well, they can't be good if their dad's this one or whatever. Mm-hmm. But there's these, um, that's, a, that's a bad fucking uh, notion to have. And I think it's just because people just think that automatically. But Jacob uh, carved his own career and wrote amazing songs. And I'm listening to this record and it is fucking smoking. And you're coming from, you know, your father being Dickie Betts and the Allman Brothers and being around that, you could either rebel against that, where you're like, ah, fuck that, that's my dad's shit, I'm into hip hop or whatever, or you can get in, <laughs> you know? You know well, I, mean? I like hip hop, I like hip hop too, but I don't think I'm, you know, I don't think I'm much of a rapper, but I, I like a lot of, I like a lot of stuff that has nothing to do with, with um, that music, you know, with my dad's music, but, you know, I mean, I uh, I am who I am, so I just try to be authentic to, you know, what's ingrained in me and ha- how I play, you know, is not totally different than that, you know. Well, I mean, I suppose I could make like a, I could do a goth record, my next record, I could do like, start singing like a, you know, Robert Smith or something. And, you know, and I love that stuff. Like I love the cure. I love, you know, but it's just not, that's not me, you know? It's amazing though, how authentic this record sounds. And uh, it just, it was blowing my mind last night. I was listening to it. Well, man, I, I love it. I mean, that's what, that's what we wanted to get across was just, you know, really kind of capturing the essence of, of the the sound and the and the songs and the story and the the feeling of um you know it has kind of an old florida kind of you know because my family my dad and his granddad and you know come from kind of my fam that side of the family's been down here for a while and you know i recorded the record at derek and susan's uh derek trucks and susan tedeschi's place up in jacksonville um because that's north of where i am right now that's in like northern florida but um so yeah i mean it kind of has that kind of that bloodline running through it um but um there's a lot of different flavors on it oh man i mean you know it's got the soul of blue skies you know it's it's just in there 
And what's really amazing to me is I know you did it on two inch tape and everything, but you really captured just the authentic tones and uh, the whole the whole flavor of a great 70s record, you know? Yeah, I mean, we just, I mean, you get a, a bunch of good musicians in a room and, and just get, try to capture the magic and try to capture great performances, you know? Um, and that's kind of how we went about it. Um, I don't think it's, there's a right way or a wrong way, but that's kind of how it, it set itself up to be. Um, I just had a lot of confidence in the, in the, uh, the rhythm section and the, and the musicians as a whole to just get a lot of it on the spot, you know, and, and, you know, some songs really kind of yearn for capturing, capturing it live. Um, you know, when you have a jam and, and you kind of want to capture the interplay between the musicians on the spot and other tunes can kind of, you know, you can go in and recut the solos and it, and it kind of makes more sense, but, um, but yeah, I mean, we had a lot of fun making it, you know, I had Tyler Greenwell, uh, from Tedeschi trucks band and, uh, on drums and, and then, um, uh, Barry Dwayne Oakley on bass and Johnny, Johnny Statula on guitar, John Ginty on keyboards, and uh then a whole bunch of guests so it, it's it's so cool that you know all of the almond brothers kids actually can play are there any that suck because i haven't seen any that I, <laughs> you know what i mean like no i mean i i don't think so i think um i think everybody has their their uh definitely has their place as a you know some of us have different strengths and and than others, you know, like but we all are um no, none of them suck. <laughs> That's my final answer. No, they're really I mean, there aren't the ones that the so I mean they just don't play. I mean, I don't know who you know, I can't name all the kids. I mean, I don't really care, but but there's a lot of a lot of them that that play and they're talented and that's nice, you know. Yeah, it's amazing. Also you got you know, you got uh, graced with the voice, too, because uh, like we all know, you can learn the guitar and stuff. But if you don't have the voice, then, you know, you're kind of screwed. And then you're a great guitar well, a singer. Well, it's better to have. I mean, if you can write, sing and play, then I mean, that's that's a triple threat. I mean, I'm working on it. I started singing much later and I'm still trying to learn how to sing. Um it get playing guitar is comes a lot more naturally to me i'm more comfortable but i love um yeah i mean it's not about being like the most technically great singer but i mean you just want to learn how to deliver the songs and get the get the point and the sentiment and the the raw emotion across and that's that's what's really important um you know i mean you want it to be like in pitch and stuff you don't want to just yeah. be completely out of key but um but yeah like a towns van zant you know he's you know somebody that has great words not the greatest singer, but it's just it's so authentic and it's real you know and there's people that can kind of sing a little bit that don't don't have that quality so yeah, I mean, it's like Tom Waits. He's not fucking, you know, he's not going to be on The Voice, you know, <laughs> but he's fucking, <laughs> yeah. he's got so much goddamn soul and vibe coming out, you know. I saw Nick Cave last week, and, you know, the guy, when he opens his mouth, you're just like, I'm fucking in, you know. It's just amazing. Exactly, yeah. It's just It just draws you right in. Um, so, yeah, I mean, those guys are would be like the top of like the example that we're giving the like that's the definition of it or people like that so i mean you have a long way to get to before um you know you can be tom waits but uh but yeah that's what you strive for you strive to just bam like 
draw them in with a great song and the voice is it's like it draws them right in and so yeah i mean that's something i tried to work on and i think uh i think the i think the the growth is 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 uh is evident uh you know i think people that follow have followed me you know they could probably see some growth in that in that department you know yeah. but um I mean, I first heard about you years ago from White Star, you know, I was. Oh, yeah. I was out there. Living yeah, man. Way. And there were bands like White Star and Star Gun Shooters Band. And there were these yeah. bands that had like these kind of uh, star children. They're all, you know, playing rock. It was kind of like a, a Malibu slash Hollywood scene going on, you know. Yeah, White Star was very, White Star was a lot of fun and, and it was a good rock and roll band, but. We uh, we were on Atlantic when I was in the band. I left the band after the band kind of took a break, and then I went on it and started playing with my dad, uh, and kind of didn't go back to L.A. when the band reformed. And there was uh, there was a lot of stuff going on around that time. I was in my twenties, and I was dealing with addiction, and then you know, um, you know, it was a lot of fun had during that time but it was definitely like a malibu slash hollywood uh band that i mean that was like definitely that's a good way of putting it i was in a band before that called backbone and alex orbison roy orbison's son who was in white star we both were in um and damon webb too he he doesn't have a, a famous uh musician father but it, it he is uh um i mean it's it, it's not as noteworthy but he uh he was in backbone as well and was in white star um so us three alex damon and myself were um you know kind of had a nice little run there with two bands the first band broke up because our our i mean i don't want to bum everybody out but our singer passed away in a car accident but oh. that was a really great band. Backbone was was a really great band. We made one record in Nashville and it's on Spotify. It's it's very like underground. It's not people don't really know about it. But Chris was like a like if if White Star was a Malibu slash Hollywood or Hollywood slash Malibu band, Backbone was a Malibu slash Malibu band. Uh -huh. And and when I say Malibu People don't really know, you know, Malibu now is a bit different than it was. Like, it, it's kind of uh, to explain, like, what people call old Malibu, you know, is you kind of have to just know what that is. You can't, I couldn't really explain it, but it's not like mansions and Mercedes Benzes. It's like, you know, riding horses to the bank and you know doing mushrooms yeah uh, surfing under a full moon and driving hot rods and you know and it's kind of an anti hollywood you know thing that those kids had and and we were all kids then so it was kind of cool so here i am coming from florida but i also grew up in malibu i i moved there when i was 12 so i had roots there too and then i came back here and Grew up with, touring with my dad through my high school years, and my mom lived out in L.A., and I'd visit and go back and forth. But anyway, it led me back to Malibu, and I had a, a great time, and I still have um, so many friends there and consider it home, even though I don't have a place there right now. I absolutely love it, man. I mean, you know, Malibu 20, 25 years ago, you know, it's like the Malibu Inn, Chris Robinson doing exactly. all the gigs. You know. Exactly. Yeah, those were the days. And I mean, people will even say before that were the days. But I mean, for me, I mean, the summer of 1999 was like, was one for the ages, you know, it doesn't really get much better. Um, you know, it was, it was like we had our tribe and wherever we went, we all went, it was all for one, one for all. So it was, it was a good time. But, you know, um, I mean, I'm I think, glad that when I think about Malibu, I think about Tom Petty. 
I think about the Wilburys and I think about Neil Young on the beach. When I yeah. am out there, I forever feel those vibes in me. And Chris Robinson's, uh, you know, solo band, not CRB, but um, the one he did after Black Crows uh, when he was out there. And, you know, all of that out there is just it, that old school vibe, you know, people, like you said, they've got like vintage cars. They they rarely wear shoes, <laughs> but not in a <laughs> It's just kind of like freedom out there. It's wild. Yeah, yeah, that's the vibe. Yeah, so you know it, and people probably get that. That you know, sometimes people get it. Get it. They just think it's all. I mean, it is a lot of rich people. Yeah, I mean, you do have to have a lot of money to like buy a house there. Yeah. But you know, I mean, a lot of my friends. I mean, they've lived there since the their families got property in the nineteen forties or something. And they're not they're I mean, one of my friends, his mom was like a drag racer and they have like, you know, they grew weed on their property and like, but meanwhile, they have this like, they have this acre of, of land in Malibu, like with an ocean view worth God knows how much, you know, and it's just like a full on, you know, it's like. I mean, that's how it is. You know, they they got the land early. Yeah, don't don't hate on the people because they uh, they wanted to live away from, you know, the lunacy of Hollywood, uh, (laughs) but be a a stone's throw away. You know, it's it's always been magic. And I feel like there's so much there's something out there, man, uh, that creates incredible music spilling off to Panga Canyon and all of that that whole area. And I do respect a lot of the kids that grew up out there because a lot of them did shit with their lives. They could have just cashed in on, you know, living off their parents' money. But instead, you know, a lot of them became musicians and actors and and went on to make great fucking shit, man. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I mean, you know, I, I, my mom always used to say, I mean, I was, I grew up in Florida, you know, which is a lot. I didn't grow up in, in the LA world, you know, but I do know it really well. I have spent a lot of my time out there and I do, I did come up in Malibu and, and I was around that. And I know, you know, my mom always used to say, I mean, I'm, you know, well, you know, Dwayne's pretty low on the totem. I mean, some of the people's parents are like super uber famous, you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, really wealthy. And, and, and so that was never um, quite the world that I was my reality. I mean, I'm not to say I'm not very fortunate and very blessed, but you know, um, so yeah, I mean, I would look and and yeah, you see some of the people they just don't have to work and they don't do anything and don't need to and they just go surfing and that's great, you know. Um, <laughs> and then, but you're right, a lot of a lot of people um, did do a lot of great shit and um, you know, I mean, my friend Cisco Adler is somebody who works really hard and always is coming out with a new idea and is. You know, his his father obviously, you know, did really well and, and they have they have, you know, they have means, but you know, he's he's a hard worker and he's somebody that I really respect that kind of grew up in Malibu who but is always doing something, always creating, always working. And so, um, you know, Alex Orbison, I mean, I have a lot of friends that uh lifelong friends that are and the the bottom line is, I mean, we didn't really back in those days. I mean, we didn't really care like who had who's what your parents did, or I mean, it was just all about you know the hang and and good vibes. It wasn't about um, no one really cared, you know. Yeah, I guess. other people seemed to care more than than we did. We didn't give a damn, you know. When you were young. 
and you, you know, you're growing up obviously around your dad, you're out, you know, sometimes I guess I would imagine out on Almond Brothers tours and stuff. At what point do you say, you know what, I want to start playing guitar? Um, that's a good question. Um, I actually, and I've gone over this like a lot of times, but since we've never spoken, you wouldn't know. But I started out as a drummer when I was like super young, like five, six years old. My dad had a ukulele and he put a ukulele in my hands and, you know, tried to move my my little fingers around and to show me some stuff. And I just, it seemed incredibly difficult and I didn't want anything to do with it. And I told him I wanted to play drums. So he got me a little makeshift drum kit from the rehearsal uh, space they had and some like you know just miscellaneous drums that weren't being used and threw together something for me and I started playing and I practiced religiously and got really good at it and um, you know started sitting in with, with his band you know with the Allman Brothers you know of course there's two, two drummers so you don't have to you know hold the whole thing together as the drummer you know so it was a it was a lot less pressure than say stepping up later when i would step up and do a guitar solo for the first time in the spotlight you know that's a that's a lot more pressure um but yeah so i i played drums until i was about 13 and then when i was 13 i switched over to guitar um once i started playing with some some of my buddies in florida once I had moved back to Florida, we had like a little garage band and we'd practice every weekend and I'd play drums and they'd play guitar and then we'd take a break. And I kind of started seeing what they were doing. I was like, I think I can do, I can do that, what they're doing. And I started picking stuff up and then it just became a, a, a passion, just listening to records and learning and, 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 you know, learning stuff by ear and, then I sat in with Allman Brothers when I was 15 for the first time out in Vail, Colorado, and um, got a few of those sit-ins under my belt, and then it, it went from there. You know, I started sitting in more pretty frequently, and then by the time I was 18, I was out in, out in California again. And then I, like I said, I, I joined Backbone, and then, um, you know, and so, so forth and so on, but um, but yeah, I, I definitely, you know, it was really, really privileged. I'm not, I'm, I'm pretty aware of that, you know, being around my dad and, and also Warren Haynes every night during the time I was out, Warren was in the band. It was my dad and Warren were the guitar players. And, um, I, you know, I'd ask Warren stuff and I just listening to them every night, um, really kind of rubbed off on me hopefully in some good ways but that warren era man i must have seen him maybe 20 times i was just that's really where you know of course the the first wave with Dwayne and and all that was you know i was too too young but by the time warren gets in and soul shine comes out then it's a yeah whole, man it's just mock two for me that what was that the you know the second set or whatever the the two albums that are blue and or are red. Yeah, well, they call they call that. There's like a nickname that the fans give to that era. It's like the uh, I can't play. It's like the golden era, like Mach Two. The, what, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, they call they have a name for it. I guess the golden era would be like the yeah the first. The 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 resur I mean we call it the resurgence, you right. know, the golden era of the resurgence, but but yeah, I mean yeah, I mean we could go on talking about that band for you know yeah for hours. I know a lot about it, but <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So once you you know start playing guitar, were you were you destined to try? Were you listening to other styles and stuff, or was it like? Oh, I was listening to everything. Yeah, I mean, I was listening to. I mean, a lot of what I was listening to around that time was contemporary 
Well, I was listening to a lot of stuff, but some of what I was listening to was the contemporary stuff that was just coming out, like rock, like Nirvana and Smashing Pumpkins. I mean, that was the stuff that was coming out that I was drawn to um, as, you know, a 13, 14 year old kid, you know. And before that, I mean, I, I went through it like a metal phase and, you know, I was always into rap, you know, I liked Run DMC, you know, when I was like seven and, you know, I liked, you know, I, I mean, I don't know what my earliest stuff was, but, but when I started playing guitar, yeah, I was really into Nirvana and, and Alice in Chains and all of that, you know, Billy Corgan and the Pumpkins were probably in my number one. But I was really into a lot of the shoegaze, like kind of dream pop, like Weezer. alternative stuff. And uh, Weezer, I wasn't so into, but I, I, I mean, Weezer's great, but I wasn't religious about them. But um, but yeah, I mean, I was also listening to Albert King and Stevie Ray Vaughan and Freddie King and, you know, John Coltrane and Miles Davis and Django Reinhardt and you know, pink, all, obviously all the classic rock stuff, you know, I was listening to the Beatles and Pink Floyd and, um, you know, and I, you know, I mean, you get into funk and then I was listening to, went down a funk rabbit hole, uh, an okay. R&B, you know, you know, like 60s soul music to, you just go and, and listen to everything. Pretty much. There was a year where I just listened to Curtis Mayfield only. Curtis Mayfield, I I picked up. Um, it was a a uh, it might have been a CD. I don't know if it was a tape or a CD. It was probably a CD because I was I was listening to CDs at this point. Um, but it was a it was like a the cheap bin. It was like a on sale thing, and it was the it was the live at the Curtis live live at the bitter end yeah and that one changed me like that one just hearing that band and and the way they played together um just kind of sounded like they were all just sitting on stools like it was kind of like um and then later bill withers live at carnegie hall is another oh. one they were kind of had that that same kind of like they're all close together sitting on stools and it sounds like that both of those sound like that. Um, but Curtis is one of my favorites. You know? It's not real. It's Even not the, the stuff with the impressions, the everything. Um, and I've yet to, I mean, there's there's records that they do later that, you know, I mean, it's like any band, some of the records, you're not quite as, um, maybe you have your favorites and maybe you have ones that aren't quite, you don't, dig quite as much but there's there's still yeah i mean the, you know he did a lot of stuff and and there's still more to uncover you know i i still have yet to uncover um there's stuff that i probably should listen to is what i'm trying to say yeah i mean you get the curtis mayfield box set and you are you are done you know well i had that when i was 16 so i already did that but yeah um but uh yeah, the when you go and listen to the actual records that he put out, like right. um, I don't know the names of all of them, but but um yeah, Curtis is great. Um Marvin Gaye, I mean, I don't know. You can just go on and on. Yeah, I mean, a lot of that has to do with uh that Florida, you know, it's you know, they call it Southern Rock or whatever, but it's really it's kind of Southern soul rock to me. It has so much gospel and R and B. Well, the all, all my brother's band is a lot more Southern soul than right. say Leonard Skinner. You know, Leonard oh, Skinner's yeah. more, uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah, they both sound Southern. I mean, but yeah, the, they, I mean, I guess if you're talking and like really, wide terms i mean it's the same kind of music but it's definitely a different Absolutely. it's a different a different thing you know it's a lot different actually but yeah yeah I but, mean, um, well the almond brothers are the holy grail so it's just you know uh yeah they play they play different i mean they just they just do it's just different they approach the 
But man, the early early Skinner the, the Skinner band, man, they were. I never liked Skinner until I. It's funny. I never got into them until I moved to Malibu. Until I started hanging out with all these surfers in Malibu that loved Skinner. Yeah. Around when I was like nineteen. When I start, when I joined Backbone, basically is when I got really into Skinner. And I was like, "Oh yeah, this this shit is great." You're right, you know, because I always looked at it like, "It's like, why does my dad's band get lumped in with them? Like they're different, you know." The Allman Brothers are way more like psychedelic and like sophisticated, like you know, and have like this kind of a little bit of a Grateful Dead thing, like mixed in with like their style and. And I was like, and Leonard Skinner, it's not that. And then, you know, when I grew up, I was like, you know, yeah. these, these guys yeah. in Malibu just religiously were listening to Skinner and like Hendrix and and whatever. There's a lot of great music, but I was like, okay, yeah, they're, they're great. <laughs> I love them both. I love them both. But you know how lazy, yeah, it's different. lazy people are lazy. You know, it's like grunge. They just call anything grunge that came out in 91, 92, whatever, you know, it's, they gotta, they gotta have some kind of label to sell it, you know. But uh, yeah, of course, they're both equally mind-boggling to me because you think about being out in Florida or Atlanta, Georgia. You're not even near uh, the music scene. Uh, Tom Petty, same thing. And then you create something, and uh, and then it just becomes this whole thing of like, oh, the Florida, the Florida scene. You know, you're like, what scene? Mm. <laughs> it's like two bands, you know. But yeah, I, I I love them both, man. Their their work ethics were amazing. Their songwriting was insane, and the guitar playing was just beyond. You know. Yeah, I mean it's two it's it's two great bands for sure. You can't can't argue with that. Yeah, and look at look what we got from it. We got people like you, uh, Marcus King. I just did a two month tour with Marcus King. I think he's one of the greatest. Oh, you were all, that was you. I, that was, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, Marcus is great. He's on my record. Oh, he is. Yeah, he's on. He's on a, a song called "Cold Dark World." Yeah, um, Marcus is on it. Uh, Derek Trucks is on it, and uh, Nikki Bloom is on it. Oh, Nikki, yeah, old yeah. friend of mine. Yeah, Nikki Bloom's amazing. I play with. Um, uh, sometimes when I play with Phil Lesh, um, uh, you know, she plays with Phil a lot. So we've done gigs with Phil together and, um, she's, she's fantastic. She's, she's a good friend of, of ours. So married to Tim, but I, um, and Isn't then I also had her, my wife and I started a music festival actually this last summer called Horseshoe Music Festival. And we did the inaugural, um, festival uh in jackson hole oh, wow. just this last um labor day weekend and i haven't announced we're gonna do it again this next year and i think we'll, we'll probably we might even do more than one so but we haven't announced that yet but but that's very exciting so i just i have a bunch of friends you know just come and we did three nights of curated music. We did a like an Americana slash band tribute to Robbie Robertson night. Then we did a, a Dead Almonds night, and then we did a uh, we did a uh, kind of New Orleans funky rhythm and blues night. And we had George Porter Jr. as a guest. Yeah, funky uh, meter style out there. Yeah, we did. We we had a really great time. So I'm looking forward to doing that this next year. Oh, and, man. Um, if you need a comedian, let me know. I'll come out there. If I can tell some jokes. I actually, it. yeah. That would be great, actually. Thank you for... I'll, I'll, I'll bring that up in our next meeting. <laughs> yeah. at, at what point do you, do you start to get into... Um, you know, the alt country where you, uh, Wilco, Sunvolt, uh, going down, because that, that hit me really heavy. You know, Lucinda Williams, Car Wheels on a Gravel Road, all of that. Because some of this, a little bit of your record had a little bit of Sunvolt flavor to me. Yeah, I like, I mean, I've always liked Sunvolt. I'm not, I don't know all of their records, but I mean, I remember Sunvolt when I was, 16 or something and my dad really liked it it came on mtv or something and and i've always liked sunvolt 
Um, Wilco, I love. I'm a big Jeff Tweedy fan. I'm a big fan of his writing and a huge fan of the band, you know. And obviously, Lucinda's great. So, um, I don't know. I'm looking more towards the next one. I really like the record that what I've heard off of the new Wilco record, too. It's got kind of this avant garde kind of art pop, uh, art, art, uh, folky kind of thing. Uh, I it's think that Kate, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, really, it's really kind of monotone, you know, it's got this kind of one thing, all the, cause he put out the one last year, cruel country. I thought it was a masterpiece, which kind of like be in there vibe, but, uh, uh -huh. this one's definitely, yeah, it's, it's bizarre. I, I haven't been able to grab it yet. You know? Yeah. It's well, the Kate, uh, what, what who's the producer the girl that i like her a lot too that the girl that that uh she's an artist but she produced it oh wow and uh kate uh i, I could look it up on my phone right now but anyway she's great too and and i think um they're all they're all like part of the same crew now and they like her and they brought her on to do their record and blah 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 but yeah i'm, I'm digging that yeah yeah now let's talk a little I'm digging bit. like lucas nelson is great i just sat in with him the other night oh, down yeah. here in in sir in uh saint pete you know it's about 45 minutes an hour from where i am right now he was in town and he invited me to sit in and that's that's really great um you know just people like that i mean i really i like the i like a, a wide variety of stuff but what about amps? Uh, what do you rock? Because I see you play the gold top. I saw the vi video. The video is cool, um, mm -hmm. and you're you're rocking a gold top on that. But it, over the years, I know your dad. He changed amps all the time. Marshalls, diesel, you know, mesas, all kinds of stuff. But he always sounded exactly like him. What do you yeah. get for uh, amps? Um. On the record, I'm playing through a, a deluxe reverb, oh, one of Derek's deluxe reverbs that just sounded perfect. Like it sounded, it's, it was a really great sounding amp, and and we just had it sounding great. And I did, I mean, I didn't hardly use anything, no effects, no pedals with it. I mean, I I used a fuzz pedal on one song, and I used a boost on a couple things, but a lot of it was just straight into the amp. Um, live, I typically play through a super reverb oh wow. wow which is more 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 amp but um but i mean i'm open to i mean you i'm open to i'm always down to try new things um but i'm also um once i find something that works i kind of i kind of stick with it um and a good sound in super and the gold top I have, it works. <laughs> oh yeah. There's nothing better than a super reverb. Uh, unless you have a sound man going, can we turn the amp down a little? Can we turn the amp down a little? Okay. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> it's so weird where we're at now. You know, like when I started, it'd be Marshall stacks. Then it went to Marshall half stacks. Then it went to uh, uh, you know, matchless combos. Then it went to, uh you know tweed victorian deluxe and now it's like you know 13 watt amps up there people are like hey can you turn that down the stage volume's real well high. i have a sound man our we we crank them up and baffle them and put plexiglass in front of them yeah. so the sound can get oh we don't we don't put a um a really tall baffle like so i like the sound to get over it to where i still feel connected to it but if you if you put something in front of it you can kind of um the sound doesn't just go all right out front and into the mic and and um, the, i mean the sound men say it helps just kind of get a good sound um so, I mean, I try to keep the stage. I mean, look, if you're playing like a tiny place, I mean, you don't, you got to turn down at some point. But a lot of that you can do 
you could do uh, with the music we play there's a certain amount of that you obviously do with the guitar i mean you don't you can still have the amp up and then when you go to play a solo the solo can be loud but yeah i tend to play pretty loud you know <laughs> dynamic but loud you know and when i i have a good sound man and if he's saying that it if he's getting it to sound right and getting the vocal on top, then, you know, I'm, I'm cool with it. If he is and the people, I mean, I've gone out there while, you know, Johnny's. Here we go. Hey, got you. I don't know what happened. <laughs> hey, Fuck. what's up? Fucking lost yeah. it. Sure. Hey man, I'm back. Yeah. Um cool. so anyway, speaking of live, you're gonna be playing in LA. Uh I wanted to go. I think it's on the 18th, but I'm fucking got a gig in Vegas. Uh let's talk a little bit about that. And you are you gonna be touring the solo record or are you gonna be doing all yeah? The uh I've been touring a ton on it all I mean, since it came out in July. So uh we're doing we've got a lot in the rear view mirror that we've already done, but we're doing,